Hey everyone, my name is Ira Fay, and I want to show you a game today that I actually played back in March. I played it as a practice game while I was in the middle of the 2021 international tournament, and I knew that my next game was going to be as the Free Peoples, so I asked for somebody who was willing to play a practice game against me where I could play the Free People. And my opponent is Cavaliero, and this turned out to be a pretty interesting game, so I thought it was worth showing. This is where we started, uh, round one, and I've already revealed cards. I started with Celeborn's Galadrim, and also um, they started with Shadow Lengthens and Nazgul Strike, which I think are reasonable cards to start with. Not incredible, but, but certainly not bad. And... What's interesting about this is they, they allocated one eye, and then I rolled no character movement at all, and not even army movements. So this is a pretty pretty limited roll, uh, and they got their two musters. So that's nice. They'll be able to get Isengard and Saruman. And I'm obviously not feeling super happy about it. At least I have Celeborn's Galadrim, which is a great card early. I do have a Palantir to play it with. So my, my strategy is play it, see what I draw. I'm going to get to draw two cards, one for this and one for Gandalf's guide ability. And, and we'll see what happens. Maybe I'll draw into something interesting. So that's my plan. I'm assuming that my opponent's plan is get Isengard to war and then start moving armies around. Now one thing, so I start off passing because no, no reason to take actions if you don't have to, and there's nothing urgent to do. Um, one thing here is that my opponent mustered, and and I think it's fine. I mean, obviously we're going to get Saruman here, but what are you going to do with these Palantirs? And I think if you look at your role at the beginning of the round and you realize that you're going to draw a card, if you think in advance you're going to draw a card, and it seems pretty likely they're going to draw a card, then I would draw it first because who knows what you're going to draw. It'll give you information. So it's minor, but I would, I would tend to draw first. And I, and I sometimes make this mistake too, not drawing when I could. All right, so that's a minor thing. It does make sense to do the obvious things that we all know because it doesn't reveal information, but I also think if you know you're going to draw, it's worth drawing. Okay, so I pass again and we get Saruman. These are all pretty natural starts. And then I go ahead and play Celeborns. So I draw two cards. I get Fearfire Foes and Swords in Eriador, which this one is another card that lets me draw two more, and it will increase my chances of having even more useful muster cards. Um, so they go ahead and draw now, and you know, fine, it didn't, you know, it didn't really matter the order that much, but you know, okay. So so now it comes to me, and and this is something to think about. What what do you do here? One option is play Swords of Eriador, draw two more muster cards or strategy cards, and then get to do useful things. The, the idea that I came up with, which I think was interesting and leads to an interesting game, was that I separated, um, I played Guahir, and I separated Strider and I brought along Gimli, and then I ended up also bringing along Boromir in the end. I decided that Boromir wants to go with Strider because I know that I can use a muster action to play Fearfire Foes. So I, I have to bring a level two companion so that I can get to the Shire after I, after I um, get two movement. And I want to be here so that I am six spaces away in this case, one, two, three, four, five. I'm only five spaces away from Dole Amroth. Um, the reason why this is this is really minor, but almost certainly I'm gonna have to. Um, well, it's it's not gonna matter. I'm gonna I'm gonna play Fear Fire Foes. I'm gonna get Aragorn within or Strider within three spaces of Dole Amroth and be able to crown him. So it doesn't it, it doesn't really matter if I went to Cardalon or wherever. I think it'd be fine, but. Um, it seemed nicer to go on a little coastal tour here. And I brought Gimli instead of Legolas. Obviously, I bring Boromir to go down to 
Gondor because Bor- uh, Bormir allows me to muster Gondor to war with any action die, and he allows me to play. There's there are a couple of useful cards that Bormir can play um, down in Gondor, but I have to pick some other level two companion to bring along. I don't think I can bring. Yeah, that's interesting. So could I have gone one, two, three, four? So I could have actually, I could have brought a hobbit. Instead of bringing Gimli, I could have brought a hobbit to South Ered Luin with four movement. And then I could have played Fear Fire Foes. The hobbit would have gone to the Shire. And then Strider and Boromir would have gone one, two, three to Druith er i don't i don't know that if anybody knows the pronunciation or has a link for the pronunciation of that region please share it in the comments and then i would be three spaces away from dol Amroth. so that's that's um that's interesting maybe i should have separated a hobbit instead i would have had one more corruption point in the fellowship i ended up bringing gimli i think it's okay um the benefit of that is if i later draw book of mazarbul gimli will be able to go over to Ered Luin and get the dwarves immediately to war. The other thing is when I do my extra character movement to get Strider and Boromir down to Dol Amroth so that I can crown Aragorn, I will be able to immediately get Gimli over to Ered Luin and then using Gimli's ability, I'll be able to muster the dwarves to war with any action die. So is it worth the extra point of corruption to have those options with Gimli instead of a hobbit? I don't know. Um, I think this is an okay play, but I don't even think I considered bringing a Hobbit and going to South Erdogan. So that's, that's, it's nice. One of the nice things about reviewing these games, is you can, you can think about little things like that, that can potentially make a difference in the long run. But that's what I ended up doing. And, um, it led to an exciting game. So I get to draw a character card because of Gandalf. And I was rewarded for bringing Gon- uh, Boromir because I immediately redrew House of Stewards. So that's going to let me draw even more strategy cards. I'm going to get an extra unit. And I feel really pleased that I happened to bring Boromir. It's always tricky when you're when you're separating Strider. I think separating Strider early on, if you feel like there's a good chance you can get him down to Dol Amroth, that, that feels really satisfying. It's relatively straightforward. You're giving up three corruption, but you're getting a whole extra action die out of it. That's for a long time. That's great. Boromir is really always for me on the on the fence. Is it worth bringing him or not? I'm I'm leading more towards a military um, attack game, so I figure it's worth with fear fire foes. It's worth um, the extra corruption cost in exchange for just having better military options. All right, so. Um, my opponent plays Shadows on the Misty Mountains, a great early muster card. Will allow them to put pressure onto Lorien, and I get Fear Fire Foes. So the North goes straight to war. And in terms of, you know, one, I'm going to do a video later about the, the value of various cards, but Fear Fire Foes is a three die card even almost four because it lets you move companions and if you want to move companions anyway then it lets you move companions that's one die and then it gives you three musters so it's a single card for four for four dice worth of actions it has the potential to be really huge obviously if the north is already at war it's it's you know not really a benefit at all but um an er early fear fire foes can be really powerful and also it lets it just it gives a much better defense to the to the um to woodland realm and erebor if you're able to muster and dale then you can just siphon armies into those locations so this is a great early card i'm very happy with this redraw from from my Celeborn's caladrium okay so north is at war and my opponent is getting these units all together in Gondor. I mean, in Mordor, it makes me think that they're going to end up attacking Gondor, I guess, if I if I see large armies massed like this. But we'll see what actually happens. All right, and then with my newfound North, northern men at war, I muster, because why not? Good to start getting those armies ready. And my thinking is these regulars can be useful in Erebor, in Woodland Realm. I want to be prepared to defend it. And maybe someday the fellowship is going to get going. 
All right, so I draw a gray company. I have gray company and house of stewards, a lot of ability to draw shadow cards. Obviously I'm looking for, I mean shadow cards, uh, um, strategy cards. I'm, I'm looking for a will of the West and a character die because I want to get my extra die from Aragorn. I bothered to separate Strider out here. It was worth it because I got Fearfire Foes, but I definitely want to get my extra die. All right, they allocate one eye, and and I think when you start to see more of a military presence, um, it makes sense. And also, if you know that your opponent is gonna try and move characters and then crown Aragorn, they're less likely to have extra movement from Will of the West and from extra character dice, so it makes sense to keep your eyes allocated low. I might have considered even doing zero eyes there. It's a little risky, but I might have considered zero. They ended up rolling one, and I got um, only musters and palantirs again. So, so far this game, I've only rolled an, on eight dice palantirs or musters, which do not give a lot of flexibility, but because of Gandalf's guide ability and because of the fact that I got the North to war, I got pretty lucky with the, that early fear fire foes. I actually am okay with these muster actions because I can put, I can just, you know, pile up a big army uh, up here in the North. Now I would have really liked to see a, at least one character action and a will of the west and quite honestly i think if i had gotten a will of the west but no character dice i probably would have spent a ring to move companion so i could get aragorn turn two um obviously the sooner you get aragorn the longer his extra die pays off my opponent gets a perfectly reasonable roll no characters but good it's you know good to get musters and now um they'll be able to get sauron to war and get the witch king turn two allowing which is the one real drawback for an early fear fire foes. Okay, so I go ahead and play swords in Ariador partially because I want to cycle cards, but also partially because I'm thinking, you know, I can get the dwarves to war relatively easily. I know Gimli's going to end up in Erdwin, and you know, uh, I have all these musters. So let's see what I let's see what I draw. So I go ahead and put armies, full armies in there. And one of the interesting things with the dwarves, I see some people sometimes put a regular in there. If you do that and Erebor gets attacked, then your force pool, you only have two dwarven regulars. So if you use a regular with this muster, and I, I often see people playing that card just to cycle it and get a new strategy card, you only end up with one the one regular from Iron Hills, the one regular from Erebor, and the one regular from the from the reserves. If you put the fourth regular um, over in Erdwin, so that's something to think about. I mean, in this case, I I felt like they were going to war, so I might as well get it get an elite unit. But it can sometimes make it hard to reduce regulars, uh, reduce elites into regulars in Erebor, if you muster a regular with that card in Erdwin. Okay, these are really minor, subtle things, but something to think about. Okay, Threats and Promises. So Threats and Promises is interesting. Um, I don't love it, and I particularly don't love it with a muster action. Why aren't I using a Palantir and then use that muster to actually muster? I want to get the South Rounds and Easterlings to war. I want to get... Sauron to where I want to get the Witch King, and I want to use these dice for army movements. So my inclination is to save these, to use these Palantirs. And again, am I going to end up drawing a card? Maybe I'm going to play Shadow Lengthens, but I feel like now, certainly if I'm going to play Threats and Promises using a muster, I'm definitely going to be drawing a card. I guess not definitely, but it seems likely. Maybe I'm going to play Worm Tongue. I guess we'll see. Um, I mean, the thing about threats and promises here is it does look like I have just musters. <laughs> I only I only have musters, so I can't get Gondor toward war, and I'm not going to get Boromir there this turn, so I can't even use his special ability. So it does stop me from mustering Gondor, but quite honestly, I, I wasn't going to muster Gondor. I'm happy to get units up here, and I also probably have cards to play given that I've drawn 
six six of these cards. The other one other thing I just I didn't call it out when I played Swords and Ariador, I drew Faramir's Rangers and the Red Arrow, which again are quite useful cards for um, just their effects, their powerful effects. All right, so they muster Sauron to war. That makes sense. And then they move out armies. And, okay, so this looks really weird. We moved, we moved armies here and here. And now we see, okay, the plan is to play the Shadow Lengthens. So, okay, that's fine. I play Riders of Theoden. I think my plan is, I'm not sure why I play this first. I guess I hadn't entirely decided exactly what I was going to play. Seems fine to play that. And then we get the Shadow Lengthens. That makes sense. And this is interesting. Does it make sense to move half of this army to North Athelion? Or does it make sense to move this Morinon army to here? I think this way I'm going to, if I want to get these armies mobilized, I'm going to have to move them separately. But I already had a big army here. So I don't know. Maybe this army is enough. But... I think I would have preferred to do the two two moves with the Morinon army into the North Athelian army. All right, I go ahead and muster in Dale. What else am I going to do? And then they draw a card. Okay. I'm always happy to see Swarm of Bats. It's great to be able to cancel your opponent's cards. And I start to get, I get a few more, just more units. I get a leader and a regular. So I'm starting to build up. This is a really sizable army. It's definitely going to let me defend up here if I need to. But also it looks like my opponent is not trying to attack up here, which makes sense because I have a giant northern army up here. But that means this army is then going to be free to potentially attack. I'm not that far away from Mount Gundabad. And presumably this Dol Guldur army might join up with the Dimrald Dale army and take Lorien. But if if that happens, then Dol Guldur is going to be left empty. And these units are just not that far away. Of course, I only have four dice right now and you need more dice. All right. So my opponent gets the Witch King. Makes sense. And Threats and Promises now becomes useless. And, you know, was it worth it to even bother playing that? It stopped me, I guess, from mustering Gondor. That was, that was really, or somewhere else that I was going to muster. I don't think I was going to muster Rohan or the dwarves. I think overall this, this was a little inefficient. Okay. So I draw guards of the Citadel. Eagles are coming. Not, I think, particularly powerful card, but if, your opponent gets caught without character dice. It can be useful, and I think heroic death is obviously a powerful, powerful effect, particularly when you have companions out on the map. All right, so the fellowship hasn't moved for two turns. Maybe they're going to get something going, and maybe I'll roll uh, Will of the West this time, but no. So I do get two character movement, but still no Will of the West. So I'm a little frustrated that Strider was separated turn one, and I still haven't roll the will of the west but sometimes that's how it goes that is the risk all right um i get to play fear mirrors rangers which is just a great card it really beefs up osgiliath and then i managed to get three hits which is pretty lucky and now this attack is looking quite different and I also, again, get to draw an extra card because of Gandalf. So though the Fellowship has not been making a lot of progress, I've drawn a lot of extra cards from Gandalf. That's That has been nice to get good use out of the Palantirs. And we're on turn three, and I've, draw, and I've drawn eight strategy cards. <laughs> That's quite a lot for turn three. Okay, so my opponent has to figure what to do, and they decide, all right, I'm going to go around. I'm going to try and besiege Minas Tirith from the back, and then either the free people have to waste a character die to move in, move this army, Faramir's army, into 
Minas Tirith, or I'm going to get to besiege it. And I'm not, Gondor is not at war right now, so I can't muster in advance. And the thing that my opponent doesn't know is I have guards of the Citadel. So I'm perfectly happy to see this going around and the attack happening into Minas Tirith. I'm just, I'm not worried about that at all. I don't know exactly what else they could have done. I mean, they do have half orcs and goblin men, so they think, okay, I'll probably be able to take it. And even, you know, yeah, it seems it's it's not crazy. Again, I have a bunch of I have a bunch of dice here. Maybe draw a card first, see what happens. Maybe not. I mean, I definitely want to play Shelob's Lair at some point. Seems like I'm gonna play half orcs and goblin men. But am I gonna play a third card? I think I'm not. I think I'm going to draw a card, so I would probably draw first. All right, so more army movement. And again, if this army, do you really want one army here and one army here? Or do I want one big army here? I think I want one big army here. All right, I continue passing because why not? They attack Minas Tirith, give me a free muster for Gondor, which I'm happy with. And then I play Guards of the Citadel. So... That's nice for me. And I'm happy with how Minas Tirith is shaping up. All right. They play Half Orcs and Goblin Men, which they're playing all along. Shelob's Lair, pretty predictable. And then I'm like, wait, maybe the Fellowship should move. It's turn three. And so I move and they're safe. And then they forget that you have to have everybody at war to play Shadows moving. And they attack into um, Minas Tirith. Now, I play a card because I have a lot of good cards and I have enough leaders in here. It seems seems worth it. So my opponent does two damage. I think I do two damage back, something like that. Pretty, pretty average. Or I think my opponent, I guess my opponent did three because I lost a leader. Um... And then I use this character die to move companions. No, I think about it and I say, you know what? Better to move the fellowship again. And my thinking is, while I definitely do want them to get to Dol Amroth in time so that they can be crowned, I also, it's possible that my opponent is... I mean, it's possible I'm not going to roll a Will of the West next turn. So maybe it's not even worth getting them there at all. And I have only a one-third chance of being hit right now this turn. So better to move now because if they have more dice next round, I'm I'm more likely to get hit. So I'm actually relatively unlikely to get hit at this point. All right, so they muster the Southrons and Easterlings to war so that this attack can start to happen. And again, if we had one fewer card or if we hadn't played Threats and Promises, maybe these guys could already be at war. And then I won't have the option because if I move, I'll still have an extra action to crown Aragorn even if my opponent has Day Without Dawn. All right, I will go alone. Dane Ironfoot's guard. And these are all fine cards. They allocate one eye, draw one, uh, roll one more, and then I get finally a perfectly nice roll. This is, this is these are the sorts of rolls I'm I'm happy to see as free people. So uh, right away I have to move companions because if my opponent has day without dawn, I don't want my will of the west to be discarded. So I get Aragorn there. Finally, they get. Southrons and Easterlings to war, but now I have time to crown Aragorn, so I do. All right. And then they start attacking in with their Southrons and Easterlings. And, you know, I don't, I think this, this probably makes sense. It's a little weird putting Gondor to war and leaving this Asgiliath army out here, but these are relatively well defended. And so now maybe I am happy to have both of these here. So, this is good. I am worried with all of these attacks. I'm worried that this army can come and besiege Dol Amroth. So I have to think, well, I just spent time earning Aragorn's die. Maybe I need to just let him, I don't want to let him get besieged. So I might need to use this character die to move him out. I spent a character die to move him in. 
crown him, <laughs> character die to move him out. All right, so I muster into Dual Amroth because I see that this army is coming. Seems pretty straightforward. And I couldn't pass there because once this move happens, I need to be prepared to run away with Aragorn. So that's why I didn't pass. Though normally when I have so few dice, I do tend to pass to see what Shadow does. All right, and then I run away with Strider. I mean, with Aragorn now. So, so um, Aragorn, Strider has spent a lot of time on the coast. We made a joke in the game about just Aragorn's coastal tours because he's he went here and then here. Um, all right, so that's fine. King Aragorn's coastal tours, yep. All right, and then Shadow has a lot of extra dice to do mean things. And I'm very happy. I held on to House of Stewards. So, you know, even though this got besieged with what seems like only four units, I know that I'm going to be able to get um, an extra unit in there if I need. And I don't think that he's going to start attacking right away with this. All right, so this is interesting. So these armies, this army just moved around. So if I'm going to do all of that, then I think I could have, it, I probably would have preferred to have a big army here if, if in fact, I'm going to have to reinforce with this. So these are examples of earlier decisions having an impact. You know, th that was a turn one choice that's now having an impact four turns later. All right, Flocks of Cribane. You know, I am about to go through Moria, but I just, I don't feel like this card offers a lot of value. Yeah. Maybe the shadow is moving instead. You know, you could take over Lasarnach. You could get these armies together. I don't know. I don't love Flox of Cribane. Okay. So I now, having drawn... 10 cards from the strategy deck uh, get Book of Mazar Bowl. So I know that I'm going to be able to get the Dwarves to War. I'm happy to see that. And I have to get rid of two cards. What do you get rid of? Um, maybe the Grey Company. Let's see what I... I think... And maybe I will go alone? I don't know. Maybe Elven Rope if I'm, if I'm deciding to give up on the Fellowship. I don't think I want to give up on the fellowship, but all right. So I get rid of, I will go alone and great company. I think, I think those make sense. I don't really want to be separating even more people from the fellowship and uh, Aragorn is no longer with an army at the moment. So those make sense. All right. So this is a reasonable role. I'm going to get to move the fellowship along my opponent draw rolls three eyes and so this is a i don't know exactly what i want to be doing with this flocks of Curbane is certainly going to cause me to be worried about getting hit going through moria um this is an opportunity for me to play cards with the palantirs before trying to move assuming I've, i'm going to even try moving uh i certainly want to do that because I certainly want to use my Palantirs with Gandalf before I try moving, because if I do get hit, then I'll be more likely to lose Gandalf. All right, so... Um, I play Elven Rope. You know, I had a bunch of choices here about which, which card to play. A lot of these are good, but I still have hope for the Fellowship, and it's nice to cycle character cards, so there we go. All right. My opponent musters a regular in Dol Golder and a Nazgul and minus Morgul. All right, so I think they did that because they didn't have any army movements, and so this army couldn't actually move with all of these character dice. So... Yeah. All right. I go ahead and move companions and bring the dwarves to war. And I redraw a new strategy card. I think all that makes sense. I'm 
probably going to move with the fellowship, but I guess better to wait on that. See what, what my opponent does. All right. So my opponent moves these two armies separately blocking off Faramir. Okay. What the heck? And then another character movement to merge these armies. That doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Why not? If you're worried about a military counterattack from me, why not leave a regular and minus Morgul and then attack with these guys? Yeah, I don't know. It does it does slow me down a little bit. Tricky. I don't know. It seems seems pretty pretty um, inefficient. All right, I play the red arrow because I'm happy to start getting Rohan toward war, and I I don't know Dane Ironfoot's guard could. Uh, and sorry, uh, King Brand's men could be good. Um, might be worth it. I think that I feel like I have enough uh, strategy cards right now that I don't need to redraw another one with King Brand's men because I know that I want to play House of Stewards relatively soon to beef up Dol Amroth. So I think I'm intentionally saving King's Brand men, King Brand's men for later because I don't want to have my hand too full right now. All right, they go ahead and attack Osgiliath. I play Confusion, Deadly Strife hits, and they do a lot of damage, and Faramir retreats to Dead Marshes. So, you know, I think that makes sense. I don't know exactly what else. What, I mean, where else do I go? Maybe Druiden Forest. Um, there weren't a lot of great choices. All right, I go ahead and play House of Stewards now because I want to refill my hand. It seems like attacks might be happening at Minas Tirith, and I'm not in a huge hurry to move the Fellowship against Three Eyes with Flocks of Cravain. All right, so I draw some more cards, and I also just redrew Imrahil of Dol Amroth, so I'm really going to be able to defend this. They go ahead and move in and are prepared to attack Minas Tirith soon. And I think to myself, all right, my military stuff is going well. Let's create some of some threat. I don't need to move against flocks of Crabane and three eyes into Moria. I think that, I guess I'm thinking my opponent sure seems to be devoting a lot towards the eye, towards, towards hunting the fellowship. Even if I don't move at all, they're probably going to allocate eyes anyway. Maybe I can make a real stab at it militarily. Because if you look up here, dwarves are at war now. North is at war now. This is this is a giant army, right? Five regulars and three elites and three leadership. I can go up and take Mount Gundabad for sure. So, you know, I'm thinking, where else am I going to get another victory point? I mean, two more victory points. It depends. depends what my opponent does. But if Rohan gets to war, these guys can start going somewhere. I have through a day and a night now, so this army with Aragorn has some possibilities of going somewhere. So I, I think I'm my, my plan is let's wait and see. I can be patient. I don't need to push the the fellowship super hard right here. I have useful um sort of gathering moves. And because I have Dan Ironfoot's guard, I'm not I'm not too worried. You know, it's a little bit of a shame you don't want to let when you're going from when as free people when you're going for a military attack, you don't want to let your opponent just waltz into your strongholds. But as long as Shadow is not too far along in their military, you can get to four before they can get to ten. Even if you're both winning sieges. So that's why I'm just I'm getting this moving. It's becoming more of a threat. I'm also thinking, you know, I can separate companions over here and then do through through a day and a night tricks. There, there are a bunch of options that I have. All right, so Voice of Isengard, that makes sense. All right, I draw Kyrdan's ships, not particularly useful at the moment when elves aren't at war, but someday elves will probably be at war. And now I think, okay, what should I, what should I discard here? I don't know. 
I almost never discard Bilbo's song as a, by choice because it's great to heal two corruption. But I think right around now, I'm sort of deciding, you know what? My opponent is going to continue to focus on the ring for a long time. I'm going to just maybe push towards military see see what happens see how that goes maybe i'm gonna regret that later but it feels like rohan is mustering up i got some options so all right maybe it's the wrong choice but in terms of combat effects it's it's not that useful given what what these other options are all right i'm happy to see this roll there's a decent chance i could get gandalf this turn if i move twice and Gandalf dies in, in um, Moria, but gives me some good options. I again have a Palantir to be able to redraw even more cards. So move the Fellowship. My opponent use, uses Flocks of Corbain. Makes sense, but only one eye, and so they miss. Um, a little sad. All right, Minas Tirith. My opponent needs to make some military progress. I think it makes sense. Go for Minas Tirith. All right, they do pretty well, and they press once, and they take it out. So now they're up to three victory points, and they're marching along in Gondor. Though Dol Amroth sure seems tough to, to crack. All right, I move again, trying to get Gandalf, but uh, no hits. So I was super slow. I've only moved two out of the six turns. Um, I moved zero times, zero times, two times, zero, zero, and now two. Really haven't moved much. Okay. Um, oh, right. The, yeah. The, yeah. That's it's just really haven't moved much. But I did make four safe movements, and Shadow Military is pretty slow, and I'm going to have pretty strong strongholds. There aren't, there aren't a lot of easy places to attack maybe up in Rivendell if the elves aren't at war so there could be two attacks but you can't really leave Dol Golder it'd be a little risky all right I go ahead and play Dan Ironfoot's guard because now I know well I'm not getting Gandalf this turn I'm not willing to spend a ring to move a third time so what should I play let's play some useful strategy cards Dan Ironfoot's guard makes sense and Path of the Woeses. So now that I have Path of the Woeses, I think, okay, now these guys are going to have some chances to sneak into Umbar, sneak into here. There's some good, really fun possibilities with that if my opponent doesn't defend against it. All right, Dreadful Spells, but unfortunately whiffs against Dol Amroth. And, you know, he would have been, uh, sorry, they would have been, my opponent would have been a little disappointed even with one or two hits because I would just, be able to replay Immer Hill of Dol Amroth. But, you know, I, well, I mean, I don't think they'd be disappointed with hits, but it's it's going to be tough for them to beat this. All right. So they start moving. Um, what did they do? They took Lasarnach. That makes sense. But then a second one to Lasarnach. I don't know why they just moved two to La Sarnach. I understand why you would want to take care of that region, but why did I just move two single armies around? Yeah, I mean, I understand also why you might want to keep this army in Minas Tirith here to defend against Rohan eventually coming to war, but it's a little tricky. All right, Voice of Isengard makes sense, Black Captain commands, and so that's a little weird. My opponent spent time bringing all the Nazgul to Dol Amroth, didn't get any hits with Dreadful Spells, and given that that went so poorly, they decided to run away. Okay, but why did he even bother in the first place? I guess you wait and see. Maybe you get a really good roll. Um... Yeah, I think if you've bothered to, yeah, it's just, it's probably just too tough. I think you might just look at that and say, you know what? I'm just not going to bother with that. It would take too many dice or I'll just leave that for longer. Come back to that later. Um, all right. So I go ahead and um, 
Oh, I see. They are attacking into Fords of Eisen. And, you know, I didn't really expect that. So I don't have scouts here. I hadn't saved scouts. But I play the Ent card now. I normally like to save these. But by playing it now, it increases the chances that, that at least one of these units will survive with a leader. And I don't have Gandalf, so I think it's going to be a while before I could play this. Also, I have a bunch of cards in my hand, and I don't want to waste cards. So um, I play it on this battle. I wish I had scouts, but I don't. Uh, Horned Ark will hopefully do it. They get one hit against me, I get one back, and then they press and I retreat to Helm's Deep. So obviously, this is I don't really want to have this Helm's Deep fall so fast under such with such weak defense, but at the same time, I'm happy for the free musters of, of Rohan. I get these guys ready to go into Helm's Deep so that if this army attacks Helm's Deep, Rohan will be at war, and then I can attack back and, and certainly whittle them down quite a lot. All right, uh, and then this army continues to make its progress. It's It sort of has a stalemate with this army in Dol Guldur and also can go up to Mount Gundabad, one, two, three, and then I'm there. All right, so what happens? This time, my opponent plays Swarm of uh, sorry, Shadow is moving to move all armies around. Um, I guess the, these two went to Pilargir. These two went here. These two went up to Moria. I didn't quite catch where they... Oh, and then these guys moved from Umbar to West Herondor. So, again, we have a big army in Minas Tirith. Okay. We have a lot of single units sitting around. I might have considered leaving one in Umbar. No, that doesn't make sense. There's, I'm, I'm really nowhere near. One thing to keep in mind, if your opponent does have Path of the Woeses and you've captured Minas Tirith, you can stop Path of the Woeses by having one unit in Asgiliath, one unit in Lasarnach, and one unit in Druiden Forest. So I think my opponent should have left one unit in Lasarnach to stop that and put one unit in Druidan Forest because it looks like they're putting they're trying to put Rohan at war. So you know I might have I might have kept that kept that in mind. Okay, and at this point I hate using a muster to move a nation towards war when I have all these other nations who could be mustering, but I want Rohan to be ready to counterattack. If my opponent goes into Helm's Deep, I may just move to Fords of Eisen to be to be prepared to attack and capture Orthanc. So I want I want Rohan to be I want Rohan to be ready and I also want to be able to start mustering. I mean that's that's the real thing. By getting Rohan to war, now Westamnet is a muster point, I can just muster in, in Westamnet or in Helm's Deep. All right, so my opponent tries to play Stormcrow. Obviously, that's out of order because now Rohan is at war, and instead they just use that to move armies. So they're bringing reinforcements over to Dol Amroth, and Fords of Eisen is getting uh, a lot of action there. All right, Mithra Coat and Sting obviously is a very powerful card for the Fellowship, but I'm I discarded it because I just think I'm going military. I'm really focused on military, so I'm just I'm not saving the cards that are focused on the fellowship. My opponent doesn't know that, but that is sort of what I'm thinking. I feel like I have pretty good military chances up here. And then this Rohan army can do something, particularly with through Dana Knight. And um and Path of the Woes, both. Alright, so We had some disagreement about how many eyes they had to allocate. And then this is what we get. So, you know, fine. I'm happy to muster in Rohan. That's my plan. And they attack Westamnet. At this point, they 
yeah, I guess advantageous position makes sense, dread and despair makes sense, and they do two to me. And press, and I get into I get into Helm's Deep, and I'm not worried about going into Helm's Deep because I know that I can escape to down here. All right, so I muster again more in Helm's Deep. I'm happy that Rohan is at war, and they start remustering in Orthanc as well, and get ready to do these big attacks. So they've set up pretty well. But I go ahead, and, and my opponent did predict Path of the Woses. I think if you're predicting Path of the Woses, it's better to stop it, because I don't think you want this big army showing up in La Sarnach. I mean, it's the biggest army in town now, and I can muster more with Gondor. There's, I think I think it's... Now, now that I've gotten Path of the Woses happening, I think it's going to be tough for my opponent to get to 10 and race me. And I think it's going to be pretty hard to stop this army from going after Umbar minus Morgul Mornon or Baradur. It's going to be hard to defend all of those. All right. So they still go ahead and put Helm's Deep under siege. I think when you're in a situation like this, you want to sort of be... Don't go about business as usual. I mean, it's not crazy to spend that action die to stop me from mustering, but okay. So I consider mustering more with Strider, I mean with Aragorn, and not um, not making this attack now or moving these guys on to toward Mount Gundabad and maybe maybe I should have done that instead but I wanted to keep my options open Osgiliath is an important location to occupy I didn't really want all of these armies to go to Osgiliath I want to cut these armies off so yeah I don't know maybe, maybe it makes sense to leave leave Aragorn's army in a muster point for now and then get this army moving all right so i take out osgiliath and my opponent plays pits of mordor to defend mount gundabad and basically all of the most obvious places that i'm about to attack so that's a nice card to play and then i attack into west herondor because it's going to be really hard to defend Umbar, and I have good chances um, with my charge. I have good chances of taking out these three units, and then because I know my opponent has no rings, I can actually capture Umbar unopposed, and I think that's why I ended up doing this attack, because they don't have any musters right now. All right, so I play charge. I get one hit, but then on my combat roll and leadership reroll, I only get one other hit. Um, I still think I'll be able to take Umbar, but obviously it's a little disappointing not to be able to um, take it for free. I mean, without without any battle at all. And so now you can see my strategy is going to be go up to Mount Gundabad, come down, take Umbar, and I you know I think Shadow needs to potentially just abandon the Lorien and get up here and try and deal deal with this army, throw some throw some units against this this giant army. Yeah, so we took over a few things. I mean, it's not bad to take over things when, when free people are, are leaving it open, but I do think you're not preparing yourself to be to, to recapture something next turn, right? It should be pretty easy for me to recapture stuff. All right, I'm happy to see Mighty Attack. Happy to see No Quarter. These are good combat effects. And my opponent rolls a bazillion musters which I don't really want to see because I have to take out Umbar and then they can just muster up a, a really sizable army in near Harad and Far Harad. But I'm still going to try for it. I take out Umbar or work on taking out Umbar. They go into siege and I guess they forgot to draw their card. So we're doing it now. And then they start mustering up. And I, I think that probably makes sense. This is probably the easiest army to, to counterattack. Um, I attack now. I draw. I roll my six, and they get one hit back. So that's fine. This army is a very respectable army and should be able to hold 
pretty well. All right, but they muster up. Obviously, I don't like to see that. It makes me nervous. They keep mustering. And then I muster up here with the plan to take out my Mount Gundabad with these units. And even if you manage to cram this pretty full with elites, it's gonna, I'm still going to have a decent chances here. And my fellowship can get to Mount Gundabad now if I want to drop companions there. All right, so they attack Morian. I'm not sure exactly why. I guess they're just trying to make some progress, and then I play, of course, Power Too Great. So they get rid of Power Too Great right away, and then I get my North Army rolling against Mount Gundabad. All right. So it seems like, you know, when you look at an army of this size and you look at this, it seems like, yeah, maybe it was okay to discard those earlier, that blue tile and, or not the blue tile, but Bilbo Song and Mithra Potent Sting. Um, I, I think it probably turned out to be the right choice. But if you have comments on if you would have saved them at that point in the game or not, I'd, I'd love to know. All right. So I do some army movements. This is a great role for me. Lots, lots of flexibility, lots of attacks. It's all good. Um, Faramir making some progress. And um, my opponent, I guess, plays some muster card. I'm not sure exactly what their, what their plan is here. I guess hold out in Mount Gundabad. But that's going to be pretty hard for <clears throat> against an army like this. All right. I... Um, think about bringing i want to bring companions to this battle because i have two mighty attacks so and i only have three leadership so it'll be nice to get more leadership i think about the possibility of bringing gandalf as well i end up bringing i end up using my will of the west because at this point i figure i'm just making two more attacks so i don't want to risk day without dawn but one possibility would have been to use a character die and then save the Will of the West for Gandalf the White if my opponent brings in a bunch of Nazgul, which they do. So they bring in Nazgul, and in fact, they only bring in two Nazgul, and it's a little strange to me. I mean, I guess down here we have this this big attack. I would, I would, I mean, do I really need this Nazgul here right now? Maybe, but I feel like it would probably be better to, to just put more into this siege. So that you're really making it hard on on um, the free people to take it. All right, so I attack Mount Gundabad. I have mighty attack number one, and then I do I roll pretty well, and then I press and do another mighty attack and get enough hits. So. You know, that, that battle could have gone a little better, could have gone a little worse. It, it doesn't really matter. I would With the cards the combat cards that I had, it's very likely that I'm going to win that. And then this giant Witch King army t takes and puts Umbar under siege. But it's just going to be really tough to take this army. I mean, that is a eight-point army with five leadership and a companion. And I have some good cards. Daylight, Confusion, Shield Wall, Shield Wall, right? These are these are really quite good cards. All right. So they start off with um, Great Host, which doesn't trigger. And they have to press. And um, I get Confusion, which does an extra hit. They just don't roll that well. And they take more. And then they do a giant onslaught to try and, to try and win it. But they only get one hit. And so this army right here is just just too strong. Can't be taken. And that's the game. So let's look at the statistics. So you can see, you know, there weren't that many weird things. I don't see any really large numbers here. A few extra ones, kind of low on sixes. So, you know, Shadow didn't do great. And I think may maybe it's the case that these are reversed. I think there's a bug. I, I assume that Shadow rolled more combat dice than free people. So I think these are actually the Shadow results, and these are actually the free people uh, results. But, 
Yeah, just it it snowballed a little bit, and the early Fear Fire foes was able to really propel this attack up here, and then because I had so many Palantir card drawing cards, I was able to from Gandalf. I was able to just I was able to just draw into a lot of useful cards. If my opponent had blocked Path of the Woeses, that would have been, I think, a pretty significantly different game. So it would have been tough for that Rohan army to do something useful. So that's that's something to look for. I was counting on it, and it turned out to be really powerful. I think I didn't prioritize using triggering it high enough, and I think my opponent didn't uh, counter it as well as they could have or should have. So um, that was the game. Hope you enjoyed it. If you have any suggestions for other games or comments, I, I welcome them below.